all the things I saw myself getting into in life, hunting was never one of them. I didn't grow up exposed to it. No one in my family hunts. The fact that it now structures my whole year and is the first thing I want to do with my time off is one of the greatest surprises of my life. Frankly, it shocks the hell out of most people when they meet me, a woman in her 30s living in the city that lives for backcountry bow hunting. When I look back at what got me here, it's not impulsive or random, but the result of a thousand decisions that led me straight to hunting. By the time I sat down to my first plate of wild game, I'd spent the last 10 years or so deeply exploring food and food systems. I started off getting interested in food because I was a runner and an athlete. It was still just about like output. It was still about, this is how this makes me feel. I didn't really care about where the food was coming from. And it wasn't until college where I started studying sustainable development and food systems, water systems, how we manage our resources around the world and learning about big agriculture. It's grown here, butchered here, packaged here, shipped over here, sold here. You know, the beginning of that disconnect. That was when I started to kind of have a shift in my mentality around my food actually connects me to the greater ecosystem and all these other people who have a hand in making food arrive on my plate. Well, the last semester of college, I did this field studies program. We spent two months living in the backcountry and at this homestead learning about permaculture. And it was the first time that I went out into nature with a book that told me everything about what I was seeing. Check this out. We got a whole... Yes, we have a whole patch of puffballs. And they're all in really good shape. These are perfectly edible. It's so cool to learn about some of these plants and especially what we call weeds because a lot of this stuff can be found everywhere in cities and popping up through sidewalks. You know, right now we have dandelions growing in the cracks of our patio and they're also up here at 10,000 feet and that whole plant is edible. I used to work at this outdoor science school we would take kids on trail, hoping to find cool things, tracks, feathers, all sorts of like little things that you can interact with and use as teachable moments with the kids. Voila. I started to realize that, hey, I can really win some bonus points with these kids if I kind of like plant things on the trail, like, oh, there's a dead squirrel on the side of the road on my way to work. I'll scoop this thing up, I'll plant it, on the trail and then the kids and I will talk about it. We would set up cameras and come back the next day and check the photos and be like, oh, there's a fox that came or a coyote came. Kind of became known as the roadkill lady in the community. <laughs> uh, roadkill was actually my first um, set of experiences harvesting and processing deer. After I got a taste for how it felt to live more connected to the ecosystem around me through food and gardening, I couldn't get enough. I went from not knowing what a seasonal vegetable was to being a market farmer, managing a 250 acre homestead. I built permaculture gardens in Japan. I grew tropical food forests and greenhouses in the high Rockies and eventually learned how to restore large landscapes for wildlife habitat and wild food. I was alive. Everything in me felt like I'd found my path. And then there was this moment one summer. I'd spent a few years restoring an apple orchard and the surrounding grassland on this 10-acre property, and the deer population was thriving. So much so that I was fighting to keep them out of my garden. And then it clicked. The thought of hunting. 
I realized the whole time I'd been raising deer and hunting suddenly merged with my land ethic. One of the things I love so much is that I'm often hiking at times that I never would be otherwise. <laughs> you wake up, you know, hours before the sunrise, you hike in the dark, you work really hard to get into a position where you are gonna see animals when they're waking up. You're sitting very still and quiet in the landscape and you get to hear it turn on. You get to hear the birds start slowly making noise and it go from dark to just, you know, breaking daylight. And the whole world just kind of wakes up around you. Being in the middle of a pursuit, your job is to be as calibrated to your surroundings as possible. To notice the tiny shift of wind on your neck, to smell any subtle changes on the wind, to see tracks, see the depth of those tracks, to notice the tiny bits of hair that get caught on trees as animals graze past them. That depth of observation just instills these deep memories of those moments. Man, I cared about food before, but this is a whole new level. There is so much time and effort and energy and obviously like a very big decision to take the life of an animal and then take that big decision that you've made and put it on your back and carry that burden out of the woods and bring it home and process it and make it perfect and turn it into this amazing meal. That is a rich experience. That is the closest you can be to the food you eat. I close my eyes and I experience the taste and I can see the setting of where it came from. Those memories are crystal clear in my mind. I don't know anything that has built deeper memories around being in the wilderness than that. That's what's so cool about sharing this stuff with other people is you sit down to that dinner and you immediately want to tell them, hey, this is where this came from and this is how hard I worked to get it and then they get, you know, a seed planted in their brain of, well, that's cool, maybe I want to try something like that. I love this thing. I think the way in which my generation inherited wild places is that we're separate from them. That the wild is this area on a map where you can go visit it and then you have to go home. I think that set us up to have this mindset that we're separate from nature. When people start to experience a deeper connection to the landscape around them, they care about it and that's where stewardship starts to stem from. That's what's so cool about sharing wild food with other people. You share how hard you worked and the experience you had and the seed of curiosity is planted. This is our little puffball mushroom. We all have in us the skills and qualities 
to live more connected to the ecosystem around us. You might just eat it out of the pan, but we got more fish to cook. No matter what we think we can or can't do, or skills we have or don't have, I think the one thing I want people to know about foraging and gardening and hunting is that this is something that is totally available to you. That kind of interaction with nature is built into our bones and our DNA. It's just up to you whether or not you're gonna tap into it and to what degree.